saying in China, don't move to Chengdu when you're young because you'll never progress your career. The reason for that is because everyone in this city is too busy enjoying its beautiful parks during the day. This city has a lot of parks worthy of consideration for this list. Here are what I strongly believe to be Chengdu's top five parks. For number five, we're starting outside the box a little bit. This is Nanhu Park in Chengdu's Tianfu Nu District. I had never even heard of this place until I researched the best parks in China. And I saw mygu.com rank it as the third most beautiful park in China. Standing at over 6,000 acres with over a billion yuan invested, this is a luxury park. This park is said to serve four functions. Viewing, vacation, business, and amusement. I mean, just take a look at this absolutely charming European-style street aligned with Western restaurants, fancy schmancy resorts, cafes, and bars. Because China's borders are closed, I don't really have an option to travel abroad at the moment. So I've been searching for an escape to make me feel like I'm in a Western country again. Nanhu Park has absolutely hit the spot. From now on, this is gonna be the place I go to when I'm craving a little traveling abroad. At number four, Culture Park is beautifully situated right next to two iconic landmarks in Chengdu, Qintai Road and Qingyan Temple. As the name suggests, because this park is located in a cultural hub of Chengdu, it's a great place to get a feel for the local Chengdu lifestyle. Watching the old folks gather for tea, play mahjong, this place even has its own opera house. Quick side note everyone, if you're interested in more breakdowns of Chengdu and its attractions, make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on your post notifications. Thanks. At number 3, we've got Huanhua Shi Park, rated as the only 5 star park in Chengdu. My favorite spot in Huanhua Shi is Sanglang Lake. I've spent a lot of time in the New England area. I think that might be the most naturally beautiful place in the world. If I stare out at this lake long enough, I can trick myself into believing that I'm somewhere in the middle of nowhere in beautiful New Hampshire. The charming and spacious atmosphere here makes Huan Hua Shi Park a haven for cosplay lovers. The cosplayers also love to come here because of this place's literary atmosphere. Built in dedication to Dufu and located right next door to Dufu's cottage, this place is basically an extension of the Dufu Cao Tang. But besides Dufu, Huan Hua Shi's Poetry Avenue honors many of China's famous poets of the past. Wangjiang Lo Park at number 2 is definitely the most underrated park on this list. Its rich history, captivating greenery, and beautifully designed buildings make it the most photogenic park in Chengdu. When I first visited Wangjiang Lo, I was quite underwhelmed. Now this is my second trip to the park, and I now realize the strong charm of it. What happened the first time I was here is I just missed all the really good parts. This park is actually known as one of Chengdu's three famous cultural relics, alongside Wuho Shrine and the Dufu Cottage. When you come to Wangjiang Lo, make sure you find the paid entrance. That's what's hiding all the historical gems, including the tomb of Shui Tao, a famous female poet who wrote poems here, and the central icon of the park, the Wangjiang Building. And the number one park in Chengdu is People's Park, or Renmin Gongyuan. This place is so special that I'm planning to devote a whole video to it. And when I post that, you'll be able to find it right here. People say that the city of Chengdu is just a big park itself. I moved to this city because I fell in love with the easygoing, peaceful, and green vibes of Chengdu. There's no better place to experience the atmosphere of a park city than right here. I'll see y'all for the next great China adventure.